Hello and welcome to New England Authors with Camille Nasser. It's so good to be with you. We have um, uh, shows about New England and all the, the talent that we have. And we have especially blessed to have Myra White with us today. Myra, welcome to New England Authors. Thank you for being with us. Now, um, you have several degrees, right? You have a mix, I've never heard of this before. You have a degree in electrical and computer science, a, a degree, a, a PhD in psychology, and a degree in jurisprudence, uh, right? Yeah, yes, uh, I also have a law degree. Uh, yes, a, yeah, a, a, law a law degree. degree. A so doctor that's of a law, jurisprudence. A doctor of <laughs> jurisprudence. And, and um, well, uh, that's very interesting background. Uh, and you work both in the Harvard uh, uh, Business School and the Harvard Medical School, right? Um, well, actually, I, do the, I teach in the management program, which is part of Harvard Extension. So. Oh, I see. I see. You teach. So I teach management, but yeah. uh, to you know, people who go part-time. Uh, so, and you have this wonderful book here. It's called Superstar Roadmap. Uh -huh. uh, really delightful book, and uh, you talk about how, uh, first of all, we're all superstars, you say. That's right. And, and, and the, the, the title is a little bit misleading, because when you think about roadmap, I think about my GPS, right, outside, and I'm looking at something like that. But really, the roadmap you're talking about is something that's inside us. Can you talk about that a bit? Uh, yeah, the idea of a roadmap is that um, when you look, what I do is I really study people's careers and how they've become successful. And what I look for is the behaviors that they use to get there. So the idea of the roadmap was that you would go through these, you would sort of execute these different types of behaviors and strategies that are in the book and that would allow you to be more successful in your life. In the sense that a superstar is not what I would say, we tend to think in, when we look at the media that someone is a superstar if they're famous and right. we see them on the internet every day. And, but really the idea too of a superstar is someone who uh, is really good at what they do. And if you look around in the world, all of us have things that we do better than anyone else, but we don't, often we don't pay attention to it because in the educational system you're graded on how, what your grades are or what your standardized test scores are or where you go to university right. is, is, are the kind of criteria. So, but if you really look at people, you'll see some people have amazing mechanical abilities. Yes. Or, some people are really great in particular sports, but not all. They might be a great basketball player uh, and be great at making baskets, but not any good at defense. Or maybe they don't jump high enough to get rebounds. And so the idea behind it is to show people or give them a kind of path to follow which is why in the book it talks about the yellow brick road because Dorothy, you know, embarks on this journey exactly, on the yellow yeah, brick road, yeah. you know, step by step by step. And so in the book, there's step by step by step that you can do to um, sort of reach a place where you can fully express what is best in you. And, and that's really my goal is to help people express what is best in them because I think People get left out because we measure them on so, so few kind of abilities. So the idea behind this in the roadmap is a way is to give people steps and concrete things they can do, things that everybody can do. Yeah, so uh, that's the first, um, the first idea in your book, which is the most important, is uh, know yourself, right? right? And it's to know not only your strengths, but your weaknesses, right? Yeah, yeah I think, um, actually, I find it quite interesting because, um, you know, I actually started out in the UK, and there's not as much stress as there is in America, which is that if you work really hard, 
you will get to the top. That's and the American. It's the uh, American uh, way. Yes, yeah. Whereas in the British world, where I started out was it was, you know, find what's suited for you. And when I did things and they didn't work out well, my mother said, oh, well, you're probably not suited for that. Right. <laughs> Which was very reassuring. So I, I wasn't crushed by the fact, you know, the idea was I probably was suited for something else I could be really good at. Yeah. So um, I think that there's too much stress. And, and I see this with my students is, that they're always saying, well, I'm not very good at this, so I need to take a course in it, or I need to work on it, I need to get better at it. And what I try and tell them is that if you're not very good at something, about if you work really hard, you can maybe be average at it. Yeah. But you'll never be really good at it. So yeah. you really need to listen to who you are and ask people around you or notice if there's certain small things that you do better than anyone else. Yeah. And forget about your weaknesses. We all have weaknesses. And you see that, um, one reason I use The Wizard of Oz there is because, you know, all of the characters in The Wizard of Oz are highly flawed. Right, and you would yes, never that's think, right. You would never think they would get, you know, that Dorothy would ever get back to Cam Kansas. And yet, at the end, they've all succeeded in their own way, not you know, not in some grand sort of traditional way, yeah, but, yeah. you know, their goals are all different. You know, the tin man wants a heart, and the straw man wants a brain. Yes. And, and they're all very different, and the straw man's always falling down, and uh, the tin man's always getting stuck, and yet they accomplish their goal. They actually become superstars in Oz, you know, yeah, at the right. end. <laughs> yes. It's a very good analogy. And one of your points is uh, no man is an island, right? Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, talk a little about that. What, what does that mean? We're, well, we, we, we rely on others, right? Is that right, what that means? Yeah, I think it's very important because there's a lot of stress in this culture that it's all up to you. You know, you succeed by yourself. If you're not succeeding, it's your fault, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And uh, what I, one of the things I do is that you, I've done lots of, my book is really based on very careful sort of anthropological behavior research of, on maybe, at this point, I probably looked at 70 or 80 people analyzing what they do. And what 70 I 70 or 80 uh, fame, what we call famous people. Uh, yeah, I picked out famous people because they're the extreme. Right. And also they write about themselves. Yeah. <laughs> you know, going around every day finding people is, you know, it takes a long time to do interviews. There's interviews with them. So, you know, they're a good source. Uh, and so I look at them and what I find in all of them is that they always have other people that work with them, first of all. And this is particularly true of entrepreneurs. We, they all have partners. You can take somebody like Warren Buffett, yeah. and you think, oh, he's this superstar investor. Well, he has this partner most people have never heard of. No, i never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> who's supposedly a brilliant investor, a man by the name of Charlie Munger. And every investment uh, decision, Warren Buffett says, every decision he makes, he discusses it with Charlie Munger. So it's not just his decision. Right, right. And That's interesting, yeah. So you've got this thing that they get people who uh, are successful, uh, help other people, and they help them, and they also are afraid to ask other people for help, and to also realize that none of us are, uh, yeah, we can't do everything. No one's, and that's part of the message too, is yeah. that we're not good at everything. It's like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz collected all these people. She went along, she was like, do you want to join me? She was like a leader in that sense. And so when you see people are successful, there's a whole group of people behind the scenes who are helping them. Mm. And so, it's very important. Um, I think one of my favorite quotes is from Sam Walton, where he says, one person seeking glory doesn't accomplish much. 
and yet we live in a culture where you know a lot of times the media focuses on one person like Steve Jobs was the person right. that totally built Apple all by himself but that's not really true so it's there's two there's another aspect to that also is that you need other people but also to build to get top level positions in organizations you need to learn how to build power and influence of other people because there's all sorts of people who are gatekeepers and if you want the position you know a high level position where you work you have to figure out how to make those gatekeepers aware that you exist right. and and i think sometimes women make this mistake is that at least I often did, <laughs> and is yes. that you know if you do your job really well, you'll be rewarded. But it's not true. It's it's if nobody knows you're doing a great job and you don't make yourself I, visible, yes, right. yes, and or you don't get to know the people and network with people who are at higher levels above you, uh, you'll never be recognized. You will still be at your desk. Um, doing your work very conscientiously and so I also um, want people who are in that situation to realize that you know other people control how far you go in any kind of organization and you have to interact with them and it's not and I'm sure many people maybe that are listening have certainly been in situations where they're at a job and they're saying how did that person get promoted? Yes. You know, I do a better job than they do. Yeah. And it's because they weren't visible. No mm. one knew what a great job they were doing or they didn't claim their ideas or they didn't make them visible. So, um, so you took, took these 70 people yeah. and they're a diverse group of people from Lady Gaga to <laughs> um, Ben Carson to Jimmy Carter to... Um, 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 who Sam else? Walton. Sam Walton, Sam who Armstrong, uh, was it Norman Steve Vincent Jobs. Peale? Um, no, I didn't use him. <laughs> you, didn't, oh, you did one of those positive thinking people and uh, uh -huh. many, uh, uh, very diverse uh, group. Uh, did, you, um, did you just pick them out at random or did you have... Did you want to? Uh, you, uh, yeah. A lot of women in the group too, by the way. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, so have Margaret Thatcher. Margaret who, Thatcher. Uh, was the first uh, pri female prime minister of the UK. Uh, Madeleine Albright. Um, I wanted to look and see for common themes across all these people, which is what my book is is about. You know, I have the common theme of the Wizard of Oz and Dorothy succeeding female uh, leader yeah. in that case and but I wanted to look at many different fields and see if there's a common pattern and in some ways that's where the idea of the roadmap Over was roadmap, yeah. is that there is a common pattern but it's not the way we usually think about a common pattern It's sort of like you know starting with yourself who am I what do I do really well um, you know, yeah, do I know where I'm there's, going? There's something Zen or Buddhist in this book, right? <laughs> Would you say that's true? Uh, um, I wouldn't, I, yeah, in some ways, because a lot of Buddhism uh, centers around awareness. That's right. So you start with self-awareness, and in Buddhism, you're attempting to get in touch with your original self, and we... And even in Buddhism, there's the individualism that everybody has their own true nature. Right. And here, uh, you know, it's about finding your true nature because that's going to make your path so much easier, which is somewhat similar to what is talked about in Buddhism. Right. So my, my idea of success or my path <laughs> it would be different than yours or different than somebody else's, right? Um, yeah. Somebody might say, well, success means making a lot of money. Somebody else says, well, success is uh, having a lot of friends and all. How do you, how do you find out what your, what your goal really is? Well, you have to look at what you feel passionate about. If you watch yourself, an interesting thing I sometimes say to my students, you know, write down everything you do each day for like two weeks and, and then see and, and rate it 
did you really enjoy that? Uh -huh. Did you did you find that it made you feel good about yourself? Did you feel that it energized you? Or did you feel like you were exhausted after you did that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We all have things that we have to do and we're like, oh my goodness, this is and then when you get done you're just like, oh that was that was a torture to do that. And yeah. so it's very important that you pick out something that you know, what you decide to do and have your own standards in terms of what is success for you. Some people, you know, it's having a nice family, a comfortable home. Uh, other people, uh, it's helping people who are less fortunate. Exactly, yeah. It doesn't have to, I mean, I think in some ways the culture has gotten sort of distracted that you're not anybody unless you make a lot of money. And, and that's not really what the book is about is is not showing people that but to uh, find find a way to you know fully express themselves in the world in a way that they really enjoy and they feel fulfilled and they feel like you know their life has meaning and and to create opportunities for yourself wherever it is that you want to express yourself uh, one of the things is, um, you, uh, uh, do you how, learn how to manage your time? Is that one of the aspects of? Those are uh, more like you know executive function things. Yes. And you need sort of strategies. So it's like in these days of email and your phone and so yeah. on. Some of the world's greatest challenges, I think, yeah. for everyone. You have to figure out your own strategies for that. But that is not actually. There's, it doesn't tell you in the book how to do that. No. If it did, it'd probably sell a million copies. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. So what are some of the other strategies to, to find out your, uh, your goals or your strengths, or your weaknesses? Well, I think there's also psychological strategies in terms of you know, being able to, um, well, I'm not sure if I'm directly answering your question there, yeah. but um, I think you know, not talking about time management, but you also have to learn how to manage your anxieties, how to manage your emotions. And I think with emotions, one of the most interesting things is that supposedly our emotions are physiological response first. So if, and then we put a label on it. So we interpret this kind of you know, all of a sudden you're feeling anxious, okay? You can put any label on that. You can say, I'm feeling anxious because I'm really excited about what's going to happen in five minutes. So you can say, I'm feeling anxious because I don't, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Uh, uh, uh -huh. So, you know, there's also this whole component of being able to manage your, you know, your energy, being able to manage your emotions. So mm -hmm. the book tries to cover all all arenas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, some of the traits that you've mentioned. Uh, we've already talked about them here, um, but um, you want to go through some of the other traits that you have. Um, uh, how to create personal success syndrome. Uh, you want to talk about that? Um, yeah, I think the personal success syndrome is is first of all making sure you know where you want to go, and then. Looking at ways, you know, the first part of building a personal success syndrome is uh, attractiveness is important. We all start out with attractiveness, or we can. There's many ways you can make yourself into an attractive person. You don't have physically to... attractive. You mean, or, or well, it doesn't matter what you look like. You can always dress in a nice manner, in a thoughtful manner. So, I mean, certainly have clean clothes and things like this. Uh -huh, that, uh -huh, you yeah. know, and Steve Jobs was, got one of his first jobs. He, he thought that because he ate all these raw vegetables and things that he didn't need to wash. Uh -huh. So he smelled so badly yeah. that this place that he worked, they finally gave him the night shift oh. <laughs> because no one wanted to work around him. Oh, I see. Yes, that's right. He was, you know, yeah. So he failed the attractiveness test. Uh, one, of the things, one of the things that that's in your book, though, that you, um, that, uh, you say that people who um, start off with an advantage. 
uh, socioeconomic advantage, do better in life, and I think every study uh, collaborates that. Um, could you talk about that a little bit in terms of the roadmap? Because it's kind of like, um, okay, everybody can follow their roadmap, but some people have an advantage to start with. Well, I think that's where uh, knowing how to build power and influence and knowing how to create your personal success syndrome is really about that. That some people, their parents or their fathers, particularly fathers for sons, I think, they see the at home. They see when they're growing up. They see how that, you know, how they're building mm -hmm. uh, their career, and they also have tons of connections, right. which is another very important thing. Is it's not just about networking. It's about actually building relationships with people so you can call on them. Right. And say you're looking for a job, you can say, I'm looking for a job, do you know anybody or do you have suggestions where I might be able to do this? So it's like learning those kind of strategies and, and realizing that you know, there's certain things you have to do to get on the playing field. Yeah. And that those are the things I think that people from higher socioeconomic mm. uh, kind of families, they see that at home. They hear, when I was at law school, I would hear some of my classmates speak about their fathers who were attorneys and coming home and discussing their cases right. at the dinner table. Yes. So what if you're growing up and there is no lawyer that you've ever met mm -hmm. or you don't know? and so how, where are you going to learn that? So you probably get this in Harvard. Oh, you, you have people who definitely have those, uh, those connections. What do you do if you don't? What if you do if you have those on um, your disadvantage? Do you have to work harder what, or do you have to know yourself better? Or what, what do you have to do? Well, I think one thing that you can do is you can go to lots of, um, if there's somebody who you, well, there's two strategies. One, if there's somebody who you're quite impressed by, you, if they're giving you a talk, go and see if you can make a connection with them afterwards or introduce yourself or, in some cases, um, read everything they've written. People oh. love it when someone calls up and says, oh, I read what you wrote. It was really great and very helpful. Yes, yes. And, <laughs> and so you can make connections that way. Um, you can, uh, there's other sets of strategies too. You have to just be inventive. Or you can join an organization. Now see, let's say there's an organization uh, um, in, in your town and, some, and look and see who the people are who are members of that organization and, and see if they hold high level positions in the community. So you go and you volunteer for the organization, you get to know them. Exactly. And then they can help you and if you, you know, and they can, you or can you also ask them for advice. You and, could intern as well. Uh, yeah, that's uh, sometimes though, if you don't have any money, you don't want to be an right. unpaid yeah. intern. So, mm -hmm. but you have to sort of be strategic, which is one thing that I try and stress in the book is, you know, be strategic. It's not just working hard, is being strategic. Where do you put your energy? What are ways that you can get around your problem? Right. So um, it's not just hard work. It's being attractive, being uh, what out the friendly. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean good, good social skills. I think Warren Buffett uh, didn't have very good social skills, yeah. so he took the Dale Carnegie course <laughs> oh, <is laughs> when he was younger. <laughs> <laughs> but recognize it's not a bad thing not to have good social skills. Yes, Just a, go a and do of, something about it. A lot of it. the people who started uh, Silicon Valley, they had poor social skills, and look where, <laughs> look where they are now. Well, Steve Jobs, you know, he didn't always have the best social skills, but he was very good as a salesperson uh, uh. of convincing people to talk to him, and he would persist. Uh, uh. A friend of mine says, always think about uh, the rule is now he grew up in a family where people 
he learned these things from his parents. Yeah. And he said, always remember the seven no's. <laughs> he said, I, I said, how, how often should you pursue somebody? And he said, well, my rule is the seven no's. After oh, seven no's, those. give up. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a very, very interesting book. You, you raised so many points here. Um, so uh, know how to manage your performance, learn how to manage risk and adversity, and, and finally, know how to have fun. Yeah, well, yeah. You sh that's where passion comes in. You know, I've got, I figured out if you start working in your 20s, you work into your 60s, that you'll spend 80,000 hours 80, if you just hours. work maybe 40 hours a week. And so you think about that and you think, that's a long time to yeah. spend doing something that you hate. And you'll probably never succeed because you're just going to your job every day and you're waiting until it's over and you can go home, right. where, which is not the way you have to have enthusiasm and energy in what you're doing if you really want to be successful at it. And you know, you'll only get that if you're doing something that you think is fun. And that's all the entrepreneurs I look at they're all enthusiastic. What they're doing is fun. Yeah, they it, would do it even. And it really comes down to looking inside yourself and finding out your what you what you really want. And and so the roadmap is a very in, internal thing. Uh, this is New England authors uh, with Camille <laughs> Nasser. We're talking with Myra White. Myra, it's a really good, so good to have you on the show and discussing um, uh, something that I think is uh, really helping all of us. Thank you, and um, we'll see you on our next show. Well, thank you very much okay, for inviting Myra. me. It's been a pleasure.